Hey, sleep deprived. What's up, is a culture detective here investigating your favorite albums. And uh, I have been very busy for the last couple of days because I have been adventuring with a couple of friends and it has been extremely eventful and I can't wait to show you guys what the hell happened in the last two days. But today I am back to normal and, um, or was it yes? Wait a second, today is Wednesday. Yeah, that was actually a couple of days ago. What happened yesterday then? Okay, um, I am so sleepy. So anyways, today I'm going to be doing an album review on the new Macklemore album, Ben. So I have been planning to review this album for a very long time already. I plan to review it like a whole week ago. And I was either too tired or busy, and at the end I decided to push it all the way until today. And that kind of sucked, because a couple days ago, Fantano released his review of this album ahead of me. So uh, now this video is going to get less views and people are going to take it less seriously. <laughs> but anyways, Macklemore has done an epic return after six years of hiatus. Of course, everybody remembers the early 2010s. Uh, where he spends uh, his musical days with Ryan Lewis, especially on the album The, Th the, the Heist, uh, which uh, defeated Good Kid Mad City in the Grammys in the most hilarious way possible. And then, of course, in the year 2017, he released his studio solo album Gemini, which is awful. I reviewed the album in that year, and I also thought it's garbage. So anyways, Macklemore has returned literally out of nowhere, out of the blue, very randomly. And so I thought to myself, maybe, maybe Macklemore has improved. There's no way that six years later, Macklemore would still be making the same type of corny ass rap music. There is no way. There has got to be some sort of improvement. So like everyone else, I started listening to the album. First track. <sighs> so yeah, of course, just when you think that Macklemore is gonna improve musically and his albums are gonna sound better, the first track features fucking Tones and I. And yeah, this track is essentially a piano pop rap track. It's very full hopeful. It's very epic for no reason whatsoever. And it's just a very corny album opening. The second track, No More Bad Days, is basically a car commercial song. And the feature is so fucking awful. It's just one of those really basic teenage girl voices. Like very basic white American teenage girl voices that you always hear. And it's so annoying. And then we have the third track, 1984. And I thought, ooh, maybe, maybe Macklemore is going to get a little political here because it's 1984. Uh, as it turns out, this, this song is not about the George Orwell novel at all. Especially with the lyrics, I want to do this forever. Just me and you on the dance floor like it's 1984. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is sarcastic or not. Like maybe, maybe he wrote this track and it's supposed to be like a uh, sarcastic, like on the surface, it's very funny and happy and uh, sort of this awesome, blissful dance song. And then there's like a darker meaning underneath, but I cannot detect that at all. <laughs> like, like may maybe Macklemore just doesn't know that 1984 is a novel when like literally everyone and their moms know about it. But yeah, this track is a very derivative, derivative new wave track. It's just uh, really bland. And then following that, we have the track Maniac, which is about a crazy love relationship. And lyrically, we have more Walmart references, as if we already don't have already enough Walmart references this year. And this is done over this corny giddy -o guitar beat that is just so goofy. And then after that, we have Day You Die, where the rap singing is super off, and also the instrumentals are barely holding together. Following that, we have the track Heroes, 
and this is lyrically one of the most problematic and embarrassing tracks of the entire album because it is a really cringy rap song about idolizing rappers and hip-hop culture. Macklemore explains how he got into hip-hop in the first place. It's because he finds hip-hop culture super cool and rebellious because rappers are shooting dope and selling weed and do 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 bra, 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 running from the ops, yeah! If this is all hip-hop is in his mind, I don't know what to say. This is, this is, this is what a lot of boomer conservatives think that kids who are into hip hop is apparently into. And Macklemore on this track is unironically into that. Yeah, sure, hip hop has a lot of weed and dope and sex and all that shit. But that's just the surface. That is just the aesthetic that hip hop is going for. There's so much more to hip hop artistically. So uh, this is kind of a kind of a unfortunate. Then after that we have Grime, which is definitely one of the better tracks here. We have some cool funky instrumentals, a charismatic performance. I don't think it's a great track, but I think compared to the rest of the track list, it's definitely a little better. Following that, we have the track I Need, where he raps about needing happiness. He's so desperate for happiness. And uh, we have lyrics like, I need a girl, she got to be a model, or a rapper, or an actor, a fucking TikToker. I'ma call her a slut, make a track called Fuck That Dumb Bitch. What? After that, yeah. after that line with the TikToker, he turns 180 on the next track, Lost Slash Sun Comes Up, where he bashes social media. And the more I listen to this album, the more I can draw parallels between this and the latest Hardy album with the Walmart references and, and, and the social media hate and, and stuff. Now, look here. I totally understand why he hates TikTok. I hate TikTok too. I will never download that fucking shit on my phone. Not in a million years, okay? That shit sucks, and it's not even because the algorithm is bad and a lot of content is cheap as hell and it's ruining people's attention spans. It's much more political than that. But still, this is such a boomer-ass song. It, it just radiates so much boomer energy. It's the same It's the same level of boomerism with Hardy's social media song. Oh, we're all looking at our screens now, but we're not looking at the beautiful sunset. And then after that, we have the track Faithful, and on this track, he raps about relapsing and overcoming addiction, which is a really personal matter. But then that is paired with some cartoony Halloween-ass beat for some reason. On the track Tears, he raps about a drug as if it's a lover over this really corny slice-of-life-ass guitar thing. The track Sorry is a very over-melodramatic pop rap track, and God's Will. Uh, sees Macklemore dabble into Christian hip-hop and he does go really hard with the lyrics and the performances He's really fucking serious about this But the beat just sucks. I know is a track where he worries for everything in the future and The album ending Tail Lights is an epic dramatic album ending. Yeah, that's life. Life's a journey. Hell yeah So uh, yeah this album is so corny, and unfortunately, it's even worse than Gemini. I think this might be the worst Macklemore album yet. And everything about this album is so corny. The beats are all so lame and tame. And sometimes I even thought he's being sarcastic. I can't tell whether he's sarcastic or serious. We're at that level. So yeah, I'm giving the new Macklemore album, Ben, a strong 2 out of 10. That rhymes. So, have you listened to the new Macklemore album? Comments below, let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for 